I want you to go ahead and imagine an ideal vacuum, a vacuum with absolutely no matter inside of it. And I want to ask you, what is inside the vacuum? Intuitively, there is nothing inside of an empty space. But what is actually really profound is that empty space is not actually entirely empty. In fact, quantum field theory, a major part of quantum mechanics, the science of the really small, suggests that empty space is actually teeming with a sea of virtual particles coming into reality and popping out of reality like the static on a television screen. And these particles help explain many phenomena, even describing how black holes, the most powerful sources of gravity, can evaporate over time. And I believe it may explain gravity itself. But what are virtual particles and where do they come from? Imagine empty space as a series of points. If you add energy by introducing particles or photons to one of the points, it will oscillate with that amount of energy back and forth in a harmonic motion, affecting points of space around it. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that knowledge of two related variables, such as momentum and position, is limited. A version of the uncertainty principle relates energy and time, where the information for both is limited. If we combine our definition of space in a vacuum in the uncertainty principle, then we can conclude that the points in space will follow the uncertainty principle and never have energy equal to zero. In this picture of a vacuum, space is a sea of swirling points in space that constantly changes, causing what are called quantum vacuum fluctuations, where the energies of all the points in space constantly switch between different energy levels by oscillating back and forth. These fluctuations in energy in the vacuum become vacuum energy. Yeah, this is quite weird how energy can exist in empty space and not in actual particles. But what's even more interesting is that this concept can be proved mathematically. Let's look at what's called a quantum harmonic oscillator. Don't be discouraged by the name. It's just a graph that shows possible energy levels of the vacuum energy described earlier. Every escalating n adds an extremely small amount of energy to the vacuum called a quantum. What is really interesting about this diagram is what is called the zero point energy, or the energy of the ground state the lowest possible energy allowed in a quantum system. From this point up on the graph exist real particles, like electrons. No real particles can exist below the zero point. The energy lower than the zero point energy is so low that it cannot exist in real particles. Everything in this area below the zero point is actually just disturbance in the vacuum energy that we call virtual particles. It is important to note that virtual particles are not actually real particles, but rather just disturbances in the vacuum energy that can push the vacuum energy described earlier over the zero point energy. Virtual particles must arise in pairs. With a matter-antimatter pair, vacuum energy can manifest itself in tiny particles of matter and antimatter that can arise spontaneously and annihilate themselves almost immediately after they are created. A virtual photon pair can also arise spontaneously and annihilate, despite having no rest mass. An important thing to note is that the more energy contained in the virtual particles, the less time they have to exist. As previously stated in the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle, the knowledge we have of the energy and the time of a quantum system is limited. If the time is significantly less than h bar over 2, the value of the lower limit of our possible knowledge of both variables, then the energy must be very great in order to bring the value high enough to obey the equation. Conversely, if the energy is significantly less than h bar over 2, then the time the virtual particle exists must be very great. Another important thing about virtual particles is that they can take any energy and even have attractive and repulsive forces associated with them. But wait, if virtual particles aren't real, then how do we know they exist? There are many ways that virtual particles affect real matter. The experiment that helped postulate the appearance of virtual particles was the Casimir effect experiment. If you take two uncharged metal plates and put them around a micron apart and put them in a vacuum, then they will close together. Why? For any photon to appear, it must complete at least half a phase within the given distance. A small amount of space exists between the plates, limiting the wavelength. Virtual photons that are created between the plates will therefore have a limited range of energy. Wavelengths that are too long cannot appear between the plates. However, outside the plates, any energy a virtual photon can appear. As a result, 
the pressure from the virtual photons on the outside of the plates is greater than the pressure on the inside of the plates, and the plates are pushed together. Virtual particles are also fundamental to our understanding of black holes. On every black hole, there exists an event horizon, which is the invisible border between the inside of the hole, where gravity is so strong that even light is not able to escape it, and the outside, where light is just fast enough to escape the black hole's gravity. Stephen Hawking postulated what is now known as Hawking radiation, which tells us the mechanism of how a black hole can actually evaporate. On the surface of the black hole, there exist virtual particles everywhere in pairs. Sometimes, when a virtual particle pair appears, one of the virtual particles crosses the event horizon, and its pair becomes a real particle because it cannot annihilate itself with its pair. Where does the energy it took to convert the virtual particle into a real particle come from? The black hole. At a very slow rate, as energy is taken away from the black hole, the black hole loses mass and can potentially evaporate. Virtual particles have firmly established themselves in theoretical physics. I am going to discuss a new implication of virtual particles and their possible relation to the leading theory of gravity, general relativity. In general relativity, mass is said to warp space-time. Mass can be visualized to bend space-time like this. Scientists believe that this warping of space-time is what we perceive to be gravity. In the presence of more mass, the warping of space-time will become more drastic and the force of gravity will become more intense. There is something incomplete about this picture, however. General relativity breaks down at a quantum level. Scientists are trying to introduce the concept of the graviton, the theoretical particle that can carry the gravitational force. However, I believe virtual photons may be able to fit this picture, and here's why. We all know the equation E equals mc squared, but what does it mean? Basically, it says that energy is equivalent to mass, and mass is equivalent to energy. So if we put mass in a vacuum, we can picture it as trapped stationary energy. If we picture its effects on vacuum energy, it will raise the vacuum energy in space. We can picture this as a spike in the vacuum energy. The higher the mass, the higher the energy invested in the point of space, and the higher the spike in vacuum energy there is. We also know that the more energy or mass there is in a space, the more drastic the warping of space-time is at that point and around it, or the higher the force of gravity is. So the increased energy in space in a point of mass increases the force of gravity at that point of mass as well, or warps space-time. The increased energy of this point in space also increases the likelihood of virtual particles originating at that point, because there is more vacuum energy that could be manifested in virtual particles. And where would they go? They cannot move anywhere closer to the point of mass, so they must all radiate out, much like the force of gravity. Now as we picture mass increasing, we picture increasing amounts of energy in that point of space as well, and the more virtual photons can arise from that energy, and the more gravitational force in virtual photons is carried. How can virtual photons carry different amounts of force over distance, like the gravitational force does? The more energy within a virtual photon, the less time it can exist, due to the uncertainty principle. Since virtual photons travel at the speed of light, the time traveling the speed of light will determine its distance. Therefore, the more energy within a virtual photon, the less distance it can travel. We can picture high-energy virtual photons traveling near a given point of mass, and low-energy photons traveling far away from the point of mass. If we look at virtual photons as the carrier of the gravitational force, then they fit the model that the force of gravity is weaker with distance. If virtual photons are emitted in a constant stream from a point of energy or mass, then they can exhibit a continuous gravitational force that gets stronger the closer a point of mass gets to another point of mass. Can a model like this explain gravity at a quantum level? Maybe but it's just a thought. Explaining gravity at a quantum level would move us drastically closer to a unified theory that explains the universe. So it is an area of study of the utmost importance. I hope this helped you think more about the world around you in a different light.